Hello everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to bring you guys along on a journey where I wrap my truck Shadow the Toyota Tundra. I'm going to share with you my experience and my thoughts along the process, as well as some of the pros and cons I've noticed, along with all the costs that I've incurred and some of the mistakes I've made during this wrapping journey. So sit back and relax and enjoy the video. I also want to share the disclaimer that this is my first time wrapping a vehicle. The only other experiences I've had wrapping involved a Trojan latex and a Korean sausage. For those of you who already have experience wrapping vehicles will definitely cringe at some of the techniques that I've used. So with that disclaimer out of the way, let's proceed. And here are the tools that I bought for the project. I'll put the links to the items in the description below. Wrapping gloves, heat gun, knifeless tape, and it came with a squeegee so I ended up using that felt buffers to wrap the squeegee to prevent scratches, a retractable blade, vinyl wrap magnets, magnet infused measuring tape, 70% isopropyl alcohol wipes. Now a bottle of the liquid solution that can be sprayed was recommended, but my local store ran out so I settled for the wipes. I first started off with the roof of the truck. Since I don't have much experience in messing around with the vinyl, I wanted to make sure any mistakes I make were done in a place or in locations where it wouldn't be easily visible. So the first thing I did was to wipe down the roof of the truck with the isopropyl alcohol wipes. Then, using a measuring tape infused with magnets, I measured the dimensions of the roof and cut the vinyl. I added a few inches extra to the material being cut off just in case. Car wrapping vinyl comes in sheets that is 5 feet in height and rolls as long as 75 feet. For this project, I picked up a total of 5 feet by 75 feet. Now I used the wrap magnets to hold the vinyl in place while I positioned it on the truck. Then from one corner, I peeled the vinyl backing paper and started the long fun process of squeegeeing the vinyl and filling up my swear jar. Now with the roof essentially done, it was time to move on to the hood. Now I did make a few mistakes on this section and I will go over that later.
All right, guys, welcome back. So day two. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually, um, initially I thought about how I'm going to lay this down, if I'm going to lay it up vertically or if I'm going to lay the five foot all the way across. And I wanted to do it all the way across so that I can get the top part of here uh, without having to cut a seam. But as you can see, it goes all the way around without cutting off. So I need to get actually the top five foot to go all the way. And then the bottom, maybe like at this line of the truck, uh, maybe just do a, a seam. So I'll do one layer here and then just do an overlay on top of that. So that is the plan of attack for today. So with that said, I did cut off a strip that goes up to here. And I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with that. But first, let me go ahead and put the isopropyl alcohol and prepare it. Ever since I was younger, I could not draw straight lines. Even when I try to write on a piece of blank paper, I would end up like curving downwards or upwards when I write in a straight line. So I definitely could not cut a straight piece that goes all the way across. So what I need to do is I'm actually gonna lay down this knifeless tape so that I'll put the material over it and I use a knifeless tape to cut it off from the inside. And I'm gonna show you how that works. So we're just kind of following the curves or the lines of the truck. For the remainder of that day and the following day thereafter, I worked on the passenger side of the truck. I worked the front quarter panel, both doors, and the right side of the truck bed. I posted my progress from the work done on the right side in my Instagram stories, so I encourage you to check it out there under the DIY wrap highlights, as it is much more detailed and provides a much closer look at some of the work I did. got this part done pretty much all set and I ran into a little predicament I actually have that roll that's supposed to be for the rest of this but I actually ran out of material <laughs> so this is actually going to be for the bed it's just long enough for the bed and I did put aside a roll for the tailgate so this whole part I actually have to order additional roll to get done um, so that's to be continued, but right now what I'm going to do is worry about doing this part and the tailgate. So I guess we're doing the tailgate next.
All right, guys, welcome back. Today we're going to do this because, as I mentioned, I am out of material for for this. I ordered more and it's on the way. It's actually going to get here tomorrow. So right now I am just working on this. And I'm going to put the knifeless tape all the way across so that once I do stick it on, I can remove it easily. So let me share some information with you guys, as well as some of the things I've learned while doing this project. So when I posted about this in certain Facebook groups, as well as on Instagram, a common question that I received was, how much does this cost? Now all of the tools that I used in this project that I've shared with you in the beginning of this video, I bought from Amazon. Now depending on market availability, the cost to you can range between $80 to $125. And the cost of the vinyl varies depending on the type and brand of the vinyl you get. For myself, I got the 3M2080 vinyl and I got 5 feet by 60 feet of material. That costed me around $800 shift. Now in this process, I did run short of the material and I ordered an additional 5 feet by 15 feet. That was an additional $200 approximately. So just in vinyl alone, it was around a grand US dollars. And in supplies, it was about $100. So $1,100 for me, it was a cost savings because if I were to take it to someone, they would have charged me between $4,000 to $5,000 because of the size of the truck. In terms of pros and cons, there are definitely some I've noticed while working this project. In terms of pros, there is a potential to save a ton of money but it also depends on how much time it takes for you to do this project. And although I spent about 30 hours on this project, the trade-off was that I did save between $34,000 and I did gain some, I believe, valuable experience and knowledge so that in the future, I may be able to wrap my truck again and probably in a shorter amount of time. Another pro is that in a DIY project, you know exactly what you did. And if there are any mistakes made, you know exactly where you made them. Now in terms of cons, there are a couple of that I noticed. The most blatant and obvious one is the fact that this requires a ton of patience. Second, it does take a lot of time, especially as a beginner. But I believe 
with practice and repetition and experience that you will be able to shorten the amount of time spent on projects like these. Now there are some things I've learned in this project which may have been obvious to some people but I was completely oblivious to. One, I'm going to make sure that the environment that I'm working in is around room temperature. Uh, I noticed in my final day of working, we the temperatures just dipped overnight, so it was really cold in the garage. And because of that, when I tried stretching the vinyl a little bit, it tore pretty easily. Actually, it tore in three places. Uh, that is definitely something I'll keep in mind. I even bought a little space heater for the garage. Two, I would try to disassemble as much of the truck as I can. Uh, I noticed that the, some of the parts that could have been taken off, I left on like tail lights and things like that. Um, just try to get more acquainted with the knifeless tape. But I realized that if I did take that off, it probably would have been easier to work with, especially uh, to tuck in the vinyl into the little edges. So that is definitely something I plan to do the next time around. And three, I'm going to try to use knifeless tape as much as possible next time. I noticed that using that, the cuts are cleaner, it's faster, and it's just less worrying about just the blade work and cutting into your paint or plastics. And let me share with you some of the mistakes I made throughout the process. The first one I encountered was when I was working on the roof. I tried to cut out a hole uh, that would fit the little antenna thing or that bulge that sticks out on the roof of the truck. And in doing so, I cut away a little bit too much. There was a lot of exposure. So in order to correct that for myself, instead of rewrapping the top, I just cut out a hole and then I tried to patch it up with another layer on top. Now from far away, it's hard to tell that this has happened. But if you look at it up close, you can tell that there is the seams and it just doesn't look that good up, up front, basically. And I kind of made the same kind of mistake on the antenna area on the passenger side. Uh, with that, I removed the antenna, I unscrewed the antenna portion, but the plastic that holds the antenna, that part I also tried to cut around and make like a little uh, hole in the vinyl, but again, it was a little too big, so I had to do another patch. Now, with that said, that's also something that you can't notice up close or notice up far away, but when you go close to it, you can definitely tell that it has been patched up. Another mistake I made was overstretching the vinyl. Now the recommendation is between 10 to 20% is how much you should stretch of the vinyl itself. But there were some points where I did try to get it to a certain point and it believed that I stretched it a little bit too much. So that is definitely something I'm keeping in mind for the future, as well as keeping the settings around me at room temperature as well, because that did affect the ability for the vinyl to stay intact even when stretching. And one of the things I wish I could do over again was the rear cab area. So as you can see behind it, it's hard for me to reach between the truck bed and then the rear cab. So there is a gap where it's hard to put the vinyl in there as well as stretch it around and work with the vinyl. So I ended up having to cut it off so you can see the seams, you can see the, the wrinkles. And that could have been remedied if I did remove the truck bed. So in the future, even though it might take a little bit more extra time to remove the rooftop tent, the rack, and the truck bed, I would be willing to do that in order to improve the aesthetics in that rear section area. But right now, there is that open area where you can see the original paint color. Uh, luckily, I don't believe the contrast is too great for you to notice it, but it is still there. Now, a recurring question that I get is, will I be willing to wrap the truck again? And my answer is yes. With this experience, I understand and know what to expect and how to improve and actually be able to do things a little faster the next time around. So yes, I am looking forward to being able to do it again, but right now I have the wrap on. Uh, I plan to have it on for about a year, um, give or take a few months. And at that point, I will probably decide on a new color and try it again and see how long it takes me that time around. So with that said, I wanna thank you all for joining me on this journey. You know, if you have any questions in regards to the process or anything else, just feel free to leave it in the comment section down below. I try my best to get back to you guys. Also, I did put links to the stuff that I used in the description below. So if you are curious and you are, do want to attempt it as a brave soul, got my resources down there as well. And I will be putting this wrap to the test on trails and the bitter cold because I am planning to get out in the winter and year round and see how it holds up to trail damage and whatnot. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please feel free to subscribe because that is what's coming at you in the next couple of months. And aside from that, I want to thank you guys for joining me. So as always, be safe, take care, and I'll see you next time. <music>